It's a modern fetish that we are brilliant, but our ancestors were idiots. After all, they didn't have iPhones, Internet, or Kim Kardashian. This is also academic consensus for what it's worth, called the Flynn Effect. The idea is people do better on puzzles, so we must be smarter. Of course, one wonders if puzzles translates into, say, understanding monetary policy or how welfare destroys families. Thankfully, we have a real-world test actual political campaigns. Back when I was a professor, I ran every inaugural address through a flesh Kincaid text analysis to measure the grade level. The logic being that top speech writers know how to talk at voters' level. Doing that, it turns out we are getting dumb, breathtakingly fast. In 1900, inaugurals were written at between 13th and 14th grade. In other words, modern college level. Today, they're 8th grade for Obama, 9th grade for Trump, and 7th grade for Joe Biden. It gets worse the further back we go. Andrew Jackson's 1828 inaugural was written at 22nd grade, meaning, strictly speaking, two PhDs was the median voter in 1828. Keep in mind, Jackson was a populist man of the people. Washington's inaugural was closer to 26th grade, so you'd need that third PhD. Also keep in mind, almost nobody in 1828 or 1789 had a formal education. Jackson, for example, kicks off with, quote, undertaking the arduous duties that I have been appointed. Washington starts with, quote, among the vicissitudes incident to life. For Biden, it's, quote, this is America's day. So how did we get so dumb, easy public schools? The modern government school came from 1800s Prussia, who had enough of worker riots and peasant revolts, and resolved to indoctrinate kids into pro-regime obedience. It worked a charm, turning the once unruly Germans into a government-directed army that went on to do terrible things. Left-wing American intellectuals were fascinated by Prussia's indoctrination and imported it to the U.S. They were motivated not by peasant revolts, but by the frustratingly small government ethos of American Catholics, Progressives figured they couldn't frog-march American Catholics into government utopia, but by gum they have their children. These activists spread government schools to every state and got a major boost post-war when competence tests were declared discriminatory, forcing companies to instead rely on formal education to discover talent. This launched the university from a fringe toy of the 1% into a $300,000 tax on anybody hoping for a white-collar job. Meanwhile, like all government programs, opportunists, teachers' unions, took over, spending, at this point, $878 billion per year, dutifully peddling politics but neglecting the actual purpose of education, leaving American kids illiterate and innumerate. In a video last year, I mentioned how fully 23 Baltimore schools have zero students proficient in math, and in Detroit, 96% of students can't do math, 95% cannot even read. But by gum, they know they're demigenders. Take people who can't name a state or don't know what a Supreme Court is, wash them with decades of left-wing propaganda, stick them in a voter booth, and here we are. So what's next? Brought to you by Unchained.com. If we're to save our democracy, we have to save our voters by replacing government schools with schools that actually teach instead of indoctrinate. That could mean school choice, could mean vouchers, could mean homeschooling, co-ops, but until we fix it, things will keep getting worse. Read the rest with a link to Murray Rothbard's classic essay, Education Free and Compulsory, at ProfSaintAnge.com. Okay, we'll be watching. See you next time.